Hi, I'm Joe Palvino. In this video, I'll show you how to make this pump enclosure. It uses a standard March 809 pump, and there's a couple features I want to review. There's two switches on the front, one's for the fan and one's for the pump. It's wired in such a way that you cannot run the pump by itself. The fan is always running when the pump's running. That provides thermal protection. The fan in the back, ventilation holes in the bottom, and it uses a standard power supply connector here. So if you have an old cord from a PC or from a monitor, it'll work here. Total part cost is about $45 to $50, excluding the cost of the pump. And I'll show you how to make it right now. First, you need a box of some sort. This is a Carlon 8-inch exterior box cover. Inside, there's plenty of room for the pump and the fan and all the switches and all that. The motor will go on the inside and the pump head on the outside here. And on this side, we have the power coming in, fan in the back, and on the cover itself, a couple switches here, one for the fan and one for the motor. You also need a pump. This is a March 809 pump already has the fittings on from my last enclosure project. Cut the cord and you'll use some of the wiring in the new enclosure. Here's a 110 volt AC fan. Can't use a PC fan because it uses DC power. This uses AC power and also a grill as well. Here's a PC power supply plug. Had wiring on the back, I simply removed the wiring and cleaned it off with a soldering iron. Got some screws to mount it as well. A couple illuminated switches, I got these from Radio Shack. They have three connectors on the back. The first one is for your line in, the second is the switched output, and the third is for the neutral. The first step is to remove the pump housing from the motor. There are four screws holding it on, simply remove those. Then remove the magnet from the shaft. This is where the motor will go, so you're going to want to translate the shaft position from the inside of the box to the outside. This will require some grinding of plastic. Also, it's okay to be a little liberal on the size of the hole. Okay, the hole's been drilled, and I grinded away some plastic. The pump fits nice and flush on the inside of the box. Next step is to drill some holes on this side of the box in order to mount the pump housing onto the motor. An easy way to do this is to install the magnet and then you want to position the pump housing in the correct orientation over the magnet, mark the holes and drill them. And I use tape on these to give the marker something to stick to. And it's okay to be a little liberal on the size of the holes because the goal here is just to sandwich this face of the box between the motor and the pump housing. Here's what it looks like with the pump installed. This will have to be removed for the next step, which is the marking of the five holes for the fan. There's four holes for mounting the fan and you can use the grill to mark that and then there will be one in the center for the fan output. Then using the straight edge you can connect the dots, find the center, and then drill a hole there. The hole has to be big enough to accommodate the fan and I'll show you a couple ways you can do that now. To drill the hole for the fan you could use a hole saw Another option is to use a circle cutter like this and just set it to the approximate radius of your fan opening. Here's what the fan looks like, just a dry fit to make sure everything fits in there fine. Power connector needs to be installed now, so I'll have to notch out a rectangular hole in the side here. Also, I have to install some holes in the bottom for ventilation, so when the fan runs, it pulls cold air up through the bottom, across the motor, and then out the back. Here's what it looks like with all the holes drilled. Put some ventilation holes in the bottom as well, favoring the motor side. The last thing as far as holes is for the switches, and I'll install them right here. The only thing is, when you do your switches, make sure that you leave some space underneath them. In other words, don't put them right over the motor or over the fan. Here's a nice area right here where the switches will go and it won't interfere with anything inside. Here's the final product, with the exception of the wiring on the inside. Mounted the two switches on the lid. 
And on the inside, I wrote a legend for each of the three terminals on each switch. One is AC in, two is to the load, and three is neutral. And also I labeled which switch is which on the back. So now I'll begin the wiring. Here's an illustration of the wiring for lighted switches. The next step is to test. Before I test, I just want to point out that the pump housing here with the impeller has been removed because you're not supposed to run that dry. So before you start, make sure your switches are off, keep your hands clear, and plug in the power. Now if I run the fan switch, just the fan should run which it does. If I turn the fan off and then run the pump switch, it should not run, which is good. Now if I turn the fan on and then turn the pump on, the pump and the fan should run together, which it does. Now if I turn off the fan, everything should shut off. The final step, with the exception of maybe labeling these switches, is to give it a test run. You want to have it plugged into a GFCI outlet. I'm using my mash tun as a water supply. Since this is a magnetic impeller, you throttle the output using a valve of some sort. I have a ball valve here. So let's give it a shot. Fan is running. You can run the pump. And open it up. And sure enough, water is flowing. 